Hi folks, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today, this machine's going to get a uh, automatic threader installed on the back and cleaned up a little bit in preparation for moving through that three foot door into my uh, main metal shop. Now, this is a HC chucker. Hard engine made it. Now, there's been some uh, communications going back and forth about how the heck you say the name of this company? Now, I've looked on some websites and they uh, say Hardigen. Uh, one, a couple readers said it's Harding. Well, I have no idea what the correct one is. And so, just to make it simple, from now on, this is Bob. Bob's getting a new threading unit today. One of the neat things about this machine is there is an attachment that mounts on these two blocks back here that it will automatically thread. Uh, you set how many strokes you need and then it starts threading and when it's finished it stops. It's very cool. So this machine did not have a threader on it but I lucked out and I found one not too far from here. I went over and purchased it, and now I need to put it on here. I've cleared out of enough space. Frankly, this is in my way. I need this space now because we're fixing to put a gantry crane in. And I need this to go to the other room. But to put the threader on, I need to be able to get around it. So I can't do it in that room, so we're going to do it out here. Got to get the engine hoist and pick it up. But first things first, I'm going to sit here and clean it up a little bit. and. Uh, Make it look pretty. So far, Bob has turned out to be in pretty good shape. Now, it's got a lot of staining on it, and I believe that is from its oil based coolant that it's been using. This is a Stuff that I found that I kind of really like. It's a WD-40 degreaser. And you can put it on where you need to and let it go from there. So, it's got a little black in it. like I found Bob's serial number. HC5027, then it's got a T after the, the end of it there. I don't remember the model year, but unlike most of the machines I get, I've got the bill of sale for this one from the original owner. It's kind of cool. Now I've read where Bob's designed to uh, run with a cutting oil instead of uh, a water-based cutting fluid. Um, it's got a two-gallon built-in sump and uh, frankly I don't see any reason not to run oil anyway. In fact, probably 90% of what I do is going to be dry anyway. So. I always have problems with water-based coolants evaporating down here. They'll uh, go out of the sump on me. All right. This is the area I need to clean. And frankly, I don't want to rub on that paint too much more. I'm afraid more will come off like that. So that's where we're going to stop. Bob looks better already. I'm going to pull out these plug covers real quick and run a tap through them. Didn't have any uh, socket head cap screws with it for this plate, but 
I rounded up an assortment of the ones I had. Bob's not going to know what to do with stainless steel screws. This sucks. I'll be older than Don by the time I'm through. Got to speed this up. I wonder. Whoa. Change of plan. It's like Bob has got through holes in most of them. And if I run this tap through them, I could be putting particles down inside there. And frankly, I don't know where they go. So Bob is just going to have to suck it up as I screw these other parts in. Don't need you anymore. Now this is the plate that's got a, two T-slots that bounce on here. So better clean it up a little bit before I put it on there. Looks like it was never moved from the first position it was put in. staining but most time I use the white cheap towels on this stuff they're great for scrubbing and getting the initial stuff off you still need a little bit of better absorbency and these blue ones work pretty good for that Just gotta remember they're expensive, but Bob's worth it. Okay. I have absolutely no idea how this is supposed to fit. How's that, sports fans? But luckily, got a manual for it. <laughs> well, this thing got some staining on it. Before I get my former owner sent me the, the manuals he had. One looks like it was copied, and another one looks like it was uh, one of those reproductions you can buy. And the very first thing on page three is installing on existing machinery.
and it looks to me like Bob has all the necessary holes here. I haven't ever played around with an automatic. Can you guys see the guys way up there again? Down here we can see. How's that? Now I haven't ever played around with one of these automatic ones. Bob was always too rich for my blood. And now Bob's kind of obsolete, and you can buy them on the market for decent prices. Now, it, you got to look around to get a good one because there's a lot of them out there that are just too expensive. Now, this one shows... dead gum exact picture of Bob on the back. I don't know where they found this one, but there's a Bob picture right there. That's what we're working on. And it shows the long end. These things are asymmetrical. Or not symmetrical. Yeah, that's asymmetrical. Being towards the collar point. Which it over. It looks like Bob's area right there. Let's see if I can make that look a little bit better before we put it up there. D40 and Scotch Bright work well for these things. Of course, it's always better if Don's doing the scrubbing. He's such a pro at it. Well, as you can see, I about got them all done. It's a good thing I'm on a timeline today. I have to eat dinner and uh, go to a uh, play read through at our local community theater. I like every once in a while I'm able to participate in a play and since COVID came along you know it's kind of shut down the inside stuff but the Navasota Theater Alliance puts on a play called Lanterns and Legends and what it is is we have a pretty historic city here uh, Constitution of Texas was signed about four miles outside of town Every couple of years, I go out there and play uh, Sam Houston for that festival. But Lantern and Legends is kind of unique. It takes place in a cemetery around October, Halloween. And what someone in the group does is write a script about six people that are buried in that cemetery. And then actors take on the role of that person. Kind of neat. People show up every 15 minutes, get into a group with a tour guide, and the tour guide leads them around the cemetery in the dark. And he'll come to my grave. Uh, I have a little lantern there that illuminates me. 
and I tell the story of the person that I'm reenacting. It's kind of fun. I have to memorize about four pages of dialogue and take on the character of someone who was, uh, heck, he was the district attorney in 1900 here. He's got lots of history. And if you can't tell, I'm a big ham at heart anyway. Aha, found one that wasn't tight. these tight so that vibration doesn't screw up your tolerances. It doesn't say to torque them down, but I'm putting a little pretty effort on them. Okay. There we go. Now that head unit over there, can you see it over on the table? We've got to pick it up with a sling and sit it down on here. It's got some T-bolts that slide in these channels. It's got four of them that you need to line up. This plate allows for the head to move back and forth a little bit. Apparently it's kind of a way to get more range out of it. That's stained a little bit on a line there. Have to make sure that's okay. Been sitting in a while. This is a, a one owner machine. The guy bought it. I think he paid fourteen thousand dollars for it new. But that was back in the 70s, so a lot of money. This is the stump sump for it down there. Got a little stainless steel cover. You can open it up. Well, it's two gallons of oil. Now, I don't know how good the oil is that's in it now, or if even if there's any in there, I suspect there is. But I bought some, I think it's mobile net, some number. We can drain it out and top it up. I think this, can you see down here? No, you can't. I think that's the drain for it. Let's drain the sump out. All right, I'm gonna move the All right, I'm gonna move the engine lift into position. Get you guys out of the way a little bit. Crooked over here. I 
That's better. Get that out of your way. Now my goal is to clear all this out and organize it. Now some people said that uh, I got a comment on one of the videos. I love your comments, guys. It's kind of fun to talk to everyone. COVID kind of limits my ability to see a lot of people. But they said that my shop was beginning to look like Brian Block's shop. And I took that as a compliment. May have not have been meant like that, but Brian Block's shop has got lots of neat tools that you just don't see everywhere. And he does lots of unique things. His shop looks like it does the same way mine does because it's only one of us. Now, everything that you see in here gets done is by me. I mean, well, Don helps sometimes, but Brian's working a full-time job, doing machining, building that shop by himself. Shoot, I'm proud my shop look like his. Now, how are we going to do this one? It says suspended. And I said, okay. This is uh, the control for it. I got to drill some holes back on the other side. This side has to go over there. Question is, will it rotate up to do so? I better look at the picture again. Well, I guess these instructions were wrote back when men were real men. Women were real women, and small furry creatures from Alpha Centauri were real small furry creatures from Alpha Centauri. It says position threading unit with a hoist and sling on the back and screw down. All this stuff's a little bit big. So, try this little straps. Frankly, the only place I can see the I don't want to hurt anything is up underneath this screw area. You guys don't know if you're anyone is interested, but unfortunately that little power hammer is gonna to have to leave. Frankly, my hands are in such bad shape that I don't think I can sit there and bang on things with a hammer. So I thought I'd get a power hammer, but I think I will do more harm than good with my poor old hands. So if anybody's interested, it's for sale. It's $4 million or the easy payment plan, $50 down, $50 a day for 50 years. Your choice. Actually, it's outside Houston, Texas, and for $3,900, you can come get it, and I'll help you put it in your truck. Just decided to try to concentrate on things that I can do without messing up my hands any farther. Okay, let's see if this will work. I gotta leave it out enough to where I can get around that plate.
Ja. There's a way to lock this. See a way. You can't get it around that bar. Let's go a different way. See how that works, sports fans. Well, that's better. Let's try one more thing. Because I've got to still be able to position it. I'm getting tired of watching this. I'm getting tired of doing it. I wonder if I could just tie that. I think if we have more people, I'd just manhandle it. But I don't have the people to manhandle it. Okay, this way that strap will handle the weight and this small twine will handle position. It's more twine, it's a rope. It may not handle the position because it may pick it up first. Well, let's see what happens. Right. 
Okay, all the weight's on it. The question is, can I maneuver it into position? I think so. All right. Furry creatures won. this way I think I can That ain't gonna work either, folks. We're gonna have to go the other way. Or, something. Well, that was a dismal failure. So we're going back to plan B. The problem is, I'm by myself, it's a heavy object, and I don't want to mess things up. So, After thinking about it last night, I came up with the realization that I've got to lift this. I have two choices. I can either put an extension on this boom so that it goes out farther, which don't really like that because then it puts it out over the front wheels too far. It could be unstable and tip. Option two is to raise the lathe up so I can get the legs of this lift under it, so I can get closer to put that on. So that's what I'm doing right now.
there's two sizes of these bracket or T T bolt. The shorter ones come on this end, larger ones go on the other end. I don't know where that stopped, but no thanks to you guys, I got it on there. I'm going to lower it down a little bit and see where it'll go. I got two bolts holding it on the top there. into that keyway and it needs to angle down more. I wonder if picking it up would do so. Try to force it in there by tightening those bolts. But Need to Get that started. Get a nut on that one. In fact, I can get a nut on the other one too.
Okay, I'm pretty tight. Let's give it some slack and see what happens. Maybe. I saw movement. Aha! Eureka! Put the washers and nuts on it so it doesn't fall off. Getting there, fellers. It's always the way. You just gotta keep at it long enough to figure it out. There's easier ways. Like if my gantry crane was finished right there, we'd just pick it up. I've got it gonna stick out into this room seven feet so I can things underneath it pick up heads and things like that but I need this out of the way to do that all righty slide that back to where Look to be set up the first time. It's like it has a factory paint on it, also. It be. Okay, all right, now we got to get it down back onto the skates. Now this is the air control and oiler. It's got a little pin right up in here that goes up and down. Well, it's oil into the system. You set the, fill the oil up, set the pressure, bleed it off here, plug it in. I've got to drill two holes and the book says five and 
I believe it was an eight. Center to center. This may not be the factory, so we'll see. Five and an eighth. Oh boy. I'm, well, I don't know. You know, I could, that'll be out of the way. I think we will do that before I move it. But I'm going to stop it right here, guys. I've got all this mounted. This is the oil uh, feed line from the pump. Remember what I said about those uh, magnets from Harbor Freight? Did it to me again. Okay. I'll show you how all this works. But basically, your tool goes on this block here. And then you've got it up here out of the way. And when you're ready to thread, you drop it down into place. It's a neat system. Be excited to get it going. Thanks for watching.